Hey everyone, welcome back to my another After Effects tutorial. Sorry for not posting the video last week. I've been working on a project. Anyway, today we are going to create this. Before getting started, I like to thank Squarespace for supporting this video. Whether you need domain website or online blog, make your first move with Squarespace. Get 10% off with your first order. Visit the link in the description. So let's get started, open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it HUD Audio Reactor. As always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution, at 30 frames per second, but this time, I am going to make it 60 frames per second. I am making it only 30 seconds longer, but you have to make it at the exact length of your song. If your music duration is 10 minutes, then you should make it 10 minutes longer. Simple maths. Now create a new solid, we will call it the background. And then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the ramp. Apply this ramp or gradient ramp to the background layer. First of all, place this anchor points to the left side, and place this point to the right. Your layer should look like this. Now change the start color to the dark blue color. And change the end color to the black color. Perfect, this looks good to me. Now create another solid layer. And call it lighting background. Again go to the effects and the presets. And this time search for the advanced lightning effect. Apply it onto the same lighting background layer. Change lighting type to bouncy. Open this core setting tab, and change the core radius to 0.3. Now, open this glow setting, and change the glow radius to 1. As well as, change the glow opacity to 0%. Change the decay value to 0. And turbulence value to 0 0.80. Now we are going to change the mode of this layer. If you don't see your mode tab here, press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is having a good life alone, then right click here, go to the columns, and select modes. And then change the mode to screen. Now press Ctrl plus D, to make a duplicate. On the top layer, change conductivity state to 1. To make it different from the bottom layer. Also, place this anchor point to the right corner, so that our entire frame will fill up with this lighting. Perfect. In the switch tab, click on this cube icon, to make these layers 3D. Select the top layer, and press P, to open position. Change the third position value to negative 500. And now our background is complete. It's time to import our audio. Add your music file into the project. and then place it on the bottom of all layer, right click on it, and select pre-compose. Let's call it audio, also, make sure to click here, and then hit OK. Please note, I am working on the 30 second long timeline, just because of this tutorial, this animation should work perfectly with any song duration. Let's hide these lighting backgrounds for now so that we can focus on the audio reactor. Let's create it. 
Go to the Shape Tools, and select Polygon Tool. Please note, my fill is set to none. And my stroke is set to a solid color. Now, make sure you haven't selected any layers, else it won't work. Now press and hold the shift key on your keyboard, and start dragging your mouse, to create this shape. Now open this Polystar 1, and then this Polystar Path 1. And here change the points value to 6. Now we have this hexagon shape. Let's convert it to the path. So right click here, and select convert to busier path. Open this path 1 option, and then click on this stopwatch icon to add a keyframe on it. Now click on the path tab, and copy it, let's minimize it for getting us some room. Now create a new solid, and we will call it audio reactor. Go to the tools and select pen tool. Click anywhere on the screen to add a point, and then press Ctrl plus V, to paste the path we just copied. Perfect. Now go to the effects and presets, and search for the audio spectrum. Apply it onto the same layer. Now you can hide this shape layer, because we do not need this. Select the Audio React layer. Select Audio Layer to I Audio Layer. Then change the path to Mask 1. You can hide this mask by clicking here. So that we can see our audio spectrum clearly. Let's make our audio spectrum to white. Change both colors to the white. Now change frequency bands value to 100 and check it if this looks ok to you. As you can see, my frequency is not going too high. Let's select the audio layer, and press L, double time to open waveforms. Go to the point where your audio waveform is higher than other, and you can see it is not going up. So let's select the top layer again and change the frequency bands value to 200 as well as, change the side option to side A. And also change the maximum height to 1000. Now make another duplicate of this audio react layer, and change display option to analog dots. Also, change the maximum height to 1500. And then change the frequency bands to 500. Once again make another duplicate of this layer, and this time change the display option to analog lines. Let's change the thickness to 2. And also decrease the maximum height to 500. Make sure to make all layers to a 3D layer, by clicking here. And now you can delete this shape layer, because we are not going to use this shape. Ram preview this and your audio reactor will look like this. This looks good to me. Now select the top layer, and make another duplicate of it. Delete the audio spectrum from this layer. Then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the stroke effect. After applying it onto the layer, it will create a stroke around your mask. If not, you can manually select the mask from here. Now make sure to change the paint style to transparent and then change the spacing to 0%. Now select this layer, and press P, to open position. Here change the last position value to 100. Also, press S to open scale, and change the scale value to 90%. Let's call it HUD elements. Make another duplicate of this layer, Open position, and change the last position value to 200. 
Open scale and change the scale value to 80%. Make another duplicate, and change its position to 500. Also, change the scale value to 60%. I am also changing the brush size to 15, to make it thicker than the rest layers, and changing the color to a bright orange color. Make one more copy of this layer, and this time change the last position value to 800. Also, change the scale value to 30%. Now delete the stroke effect from this layer, then go to the layer, and select solid settings. Here change the solid color to the white color. It will make your layer to look like this. So, press M, to open a mask. And then change the mask to add. Here we have this hexagonal design, let's animate it. Select all layers, and press U, to minimize it. Click on any empty area to unselect the layers. Let's make these lighting background layer visible, because we are going to make the final look. Also, let's select all of these layers, and change their mode to screen. Perfect. Now go to the layers, and create a new camera. I am going to use a 35mm preset. For animating the camera, we are going to use a null object. So create a null object. And let's call it camera controller. Make sure to make it 3D as well. Now press R, to open rotation. And then in the orientation option, press and hold the ALT key on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch icon. In the script box, type, wiggle bracket open, bracket close. And inside these brackets, type, 1 comma, 10 comma, 1. Click anywhere to eject from the script box. Now we are going to parent the camera with this null object. If you don't see your parent tab here, right click here, go to the columns and select the parent. Now, Grab this Pickwick, and drop it onto the camera control layer. If you play this, you can see all the layers, are moving into the 3D space. But on some points, these lightning background layers are smaller. So let's fix this. Select both lightning background layers, and press S to open scale. Here change the scale value to 120%. And now they will fit perfectly. Let's apply a glow effect on this shape. But we don't have to do it individually. Go to the layers, and create a new adjustment layer. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the glow effect. Apply it onto the layer and then adjust a few settings. Change glow radius to 200. And glow radius to 100%. Perfect. Again go to the layers, and create another adjustment layer. Let's rename these layers first. So we can make the project organized. I am going to use this top layer to create fake depth of field. You can use the camera for depth of field, but it will take forever to render. Go to the tools, and select rectangle mask tool. Make sure to select the depth of field layer. And then create a mask, something like this. Again go to the effects and the presets. And search for the fast blur. Apply it onto the layer and change the blurriness amount to 20. Also, make sure to check this repeat edges pixels option. Now in the layer, change mask to subtract. 
and then press F, to open feather. Change the feather value to 300 pixels. Cool. I am changing the blurriness amount to 10, so that it will look softer. So here we have this audio reactor. It's time to add text to it. Go to the tools, and select text tool. Click on the screen, and start typing your text. Let's make the text size to 44 pixels. Align it to the center. And then make a duplicate of it, place it below this text layer. And here I am typing the author name of this song. Let's change its size to 22 pixels. And then align it to the right of the title text. Perfect. You can keep the text as it is. But if you want it to react to the camera, you should make these text layers, to 3D layers as well. Scroll down to the text layer, and click here to make them 3D. My lighting backgrounds are looking too bright, so let's select both layers, press T to open opacity and change the opacity value to 75%. Now the final step. Select the top layer. Then go to the layers, and create a new solid. Let's make it black. I am calling it light. Because I don't know the spelling of Vin yet. Again go to the tools, and this time, select the ellipse tool. After selecting, double click on it to make a perfect ellipse. If double click option is not working for you, you can make it manually. Now change mask to subtract, and then press F, to open feather. Here change the feather value to 500 pixels. So, our audio visualizer is complete, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day. You have done all of these work, why don't you show this to the world? Go to the squarespace.com, and make your own website, it is easier than it sounds. Visit the link in the description, to get 10% discount on your first order.